In the pursuit of improved gaming performance, sometimes you have to go beyond what the manufacturer is giving you out of the box. And in this video, we're actually going to take a look at inside of this GPU to see if we can fix potentially a critical flaw in the design. I am the Graying Tech Gaming Insider. If you would like to learn how to improve your gaming performance, start now by clicking that subscribe button. Now, it is cold in much of the United States. This week, the heat has been on, and I am going to take extra precaution, making sure that I have good electrostatic discharge connection here. My mat is grounded. Everything should be okay. Give me grief all you want for taking a little bit of precaution. Starting off, we have to remove this nice, seemingly metal backplate. I believe it is metal. It feels like metal. It just has that feeling. And I am going to use this right here, a nice iFixit kit. You will note on here that they might be some stickers that say warranty void if removed. Not enforceable. Not enforceable in the United States since 1978, I think it is. Also in the EU, you tend to be covered for this as well. So if you are in those two territories, you pretty much can ignore those. Those are not enforceable. So to take this apart, I'm going to use my iFixit kit, not a sponsor, not an affiliate. There's a link down below. It's not even an affiliate link. We're going to use this iFixit kit. This is a company that makes a great product. They are actively involved in right to repair laws, manuals, putting things together so that you, the customer, can actually take your stuff apart. It's a great company to support, and I highly recommend you check out one of their sets if you are in the market to do so. To save you a little bit of time, I've already popped the majority of the screws out. I got one more to go. Interesting that this one has an arrow for some reason. Not really sure why. Maybe that's the ground? Maybe. All right, so I can already tell this is loose and it doesn't completely fill in, it feels. It already feels a little tingy. If there were thermal pads in there, it wouldn't make that sound. So here's the grand reveal. Nothing. Okay, so this metal is, this is thinner than I thought it would be. It does appear to be aluminum at least. There is a spray material here. Maybe that's designed to conduct heat. I'm not 100% sure on that part. Let's listen to the drop. Mm. Okay. Here you can see the back plate for the GPU itself. This is how it mounts this giant fan assembly all the way straight through. That's the back portion that holds everything together. But you can see the VRMs, the MOSFETs, the backs of the memory modules. Right there, right there, right there. Yeah, all of this is, all of this is just not exposed to this plate very well. There are some cutouts, which leads me to believe that some thought went into this, but they're too loose to effectively touch. And normally you would put some level of thermal pad in there to at least remove the heat, especially on a thousand dollar GPU like this. And it does have warnings that it does get hot. So, you know, at least there's that. All right. Test number one. I'm going to put this back into Red Star. I'm going to get it hot and I'm going to see what our maximum temperature comes up to this time. And there's only one way that I really know how to do that, and that's to play games. Okay, it looks like we're onto something. So we're going to move on to actually adding thermal pads to the back of the GPU, and then we're going to reaffix the back plate itself. Maybe that will actually give us a little bit more cooling. If it doesn't, we can always just leave the back plate off. If you are going for aesthetics over performance, you're probably going to want the back plate back on. So you can see right here, I have two sets of thermal pads already in place. The first 
is the Minus Pad 8. This is a two millimeter thermal pad. It has eight kilowatt per kilowatt thermal capability. So that's the transfer rate. That's actually really, really good. That can actually rival some pastes that are out there. And I am using EKWB's VRM coolers from the water block that we're going to be adding on here. So the blue is the EK, the brown here is the Thermal Grizzly. So you can see I've already mapped this out. What you are looking for to start, you want to make sure that you are covering the back of the memory modules. And those are located around the perimeter of this back plate. And all I'm doing is making sure that I'm covering all of the surface mounted devices. I want to make sure that I have good connectivity as well with this backplate. This is more recessed than some of the other parts. That's why I went with a two millimeter version. I used just a piece of wood, an X-Acto knife, and a pair of scissors. You don't have to get all scientific and take out measurements and all of that stuff. You're basically just tracing along the open area and making sure that you are able to fit the pad inside without too much of it sticking up in any given location. So I covered all of the memory areas. I poked a hole right there in that pad because a screw does go right there. And then for the actual chokes and VRMs, I simply cut out and shaped this cover from EK, and I put that on top of all of those basically surface mounted devices that I could find on here. So I think I have good coverage. So I just wanted to show you exactly the layout that I ended up with. And you can see it does fit much, much more snugly now. No real heavy duty rattling, especially here in the area that we want nice and secure. So I'm going to screw this down, put it back into Red Star, and then we're going to test and see if we get better thermal performance now out of this back plate and these thermal pads, or if we actually got better performance with no back plate at all. So this was the test that I ran. Hitman 3 launched from the Epic Store. I did close Epic itself when the game actually started, and I did the Paris Escalation mission the last one, the level three of that, three separate runs of that. Roughly 15 minutes is how long it took me for each of those runs, or at least how long I let it run before I restarted. Measurements were all started when I started the game, so I used Hardware Info 64 to capture this. I also did a full burn in with the thermal pads themselves. So I allowed the CPU to get very hot and then I turned the system off for 15 minutes, let it cool down, and then I ran the actual benchmark that you're going to see here. XMP was enabled because you paid for it. It should be enabled. The remainder of the settings were all stock. Nothing else was changed. So here are the results. In the center column, you have maximum XMP 4K you have the maximum with the no backplate, and then you have the maximum with the thermal pads. The items on the left actually describe what those numbers are. So starting off here with temperature. Every temperature was lower for backplate and thermal pad. Backplate did have slightly lower temperatures in some regards, but every one of those was lower than stock. So significant advantages here by simply taking the backplate off or taking it off and putting the thermal pads on. Next up, we saw decreases in voltage across the board. Now this is extremely significant because there is a tight correlation between voltage, current, heat, and your boost and the frequency that your CPU is able to sustain. The less voltage, the less current, the less heat, the higher your sustained boosts are going to be. So the fact that it drew less voltage is extremely important. And like I mentioned, voltage and current have a direct relationship with each other, so we would expect to see current here being lower. That also means our temperature itself should be lower, which we are seeing here as well. Power consumption overall was lower for the no backplate and for the no thermal section here. So across the board again, 
we had better overall performance without the backplate, or if you are going for aesthetic, you could keep the backplate, but then put some thermal pads in place, which ultimately leads me to conclude AMD kind of cheaped out a little bit here. You can either remove the backplate or you can add in about $30 worth of thermal pads. That's what I put on here, and you should get increased performance by doing so. And I have ran some tests, which I will go over in a future video when I kind of wrap all of this up. But as you can see, our temperatures, our voltage, and our current at least are all lower by using these methods. So I'm going to say myth, hypothesis, confirmed.